Hey everybody, welcome to CS124. My name is Jeff Challent. I'm your instructor this semester. This is probably one of the most important videos that you're going to see, particularly early on in the semester, because in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to approach your work in this class. So CS124 is taught in a tutorial format that involves you doing individual work on your own to begin understanding the concepts, but also us providing you with a lot of support along the way and a lot of individual one-on-one -on -one tutoring when you need it. Um, but let me walk you through how to approach a lesson, um, show you some of the components, give you a sense of sort of what you do every day in this class. Like how do you approach the work uh, that we ask you to do on a daily basis? Okay, so uh, let's get started. I'm gonna head over to, uh, to the website. Um, I'm logged in using a, a fake student account. I've chosen Kotlin as my primary language. Um, and what I'm gonna do, what you're gonna do on a daily basis is you're gonna come over here and you're gonna go to the lesson tab. Um, and you'll see uh, these are the lessons that are available right now. We've made the first two weeks of content available for you during these first few days, during the first uh, few weeks. It's because students join at different times and things like that. Normally what you'll see is you'll see the lessons that have been completed and then a couple of lessons that are open to work on for the next few days. One of the foundations of our approach to teaching computer science in this course is having you do a little bit of work every day. This is a really well understood learning technique that's called spaced repetition. And if you've learned anything else in your life, or if you practice a skill like some sort of sport or a musical instrument or writing or things like that, you know the value of daily practice. We wanna bring you back every day to the material, learn a little bit more, reinforce these mental pathways that are being built that are allowing you to gain uh, an increased understanding of the material. Right? So it's one of the reasons that we don't have lectures, can't do that every day. So we want you to come back to the material every day. So we've broken things up into day-sized chunks. We think that if you do this, you'll spend an appropriate amount of time on the course each week. Um, but the first thing you'll do every day, come to the lesson page and pick the lesson for that day. So I'm gonna show you the lesson, uh, our getting started lesson. Um, so let's talk about what are the components that we see here. So there is text on the page. We expect you to read the text. Um, and there are also these playgrounds. So here's one. Uh, these playgrounds allow you to edit and run code. I can run it either using the play button. I can also hit control enter, which will also run the code. And this is totally safe. You're not going to break anything. You know, even if you make small mistakes, good chance to learn, you know, how to make errors and fix them. But this is part of the interactive nature of our materials are these walkthroughs, right? So please use the walkthroughs, um, experiment with them, run the code in them for sure, but then also experiment, you know, make small changes, see what happens. One of the things we're trying to get you to do is take this sort of uh, playful and experimental attitude towards the material, right? And the walkthroughs are here to allow you to do this safely and easily directly through the website. Okay, so, um, Let's see, as we scroll down here, okay, so here's our first example of a video component. This is actually the one I'm recording right now, so I'm gonna replace this. Um, when I click on this icon down here, right, uh, this video is going to start to play. I'm gonna turn the sound off so I don't distract myself. This is the old version of this video. Um, now, to help you keep track of what you've done, as you see down here, as the video is playing, we're keeping track of how much of it you've seen. Right? So at this point, you've completed 4%. I'm still rambling and rambling. This video goes on for a while, right? Um, so this is here, this green circle that's filling in around my face is to show you, you know, help you realize and remember, hey, you know, maybe there's some of this video I still need to watch, right? You're welcome to seek around through the video. You can also turn it on, you know, higher speed if that works better for you. If you want to go to like 1.5 or something like that, that's also fine, right? Um, I would encourage you to experiment with these settings and you know, make sure that you find ones that work for you. One of the things we found I really want to emphasize in this um, overview is that students who view the content that we provide do very well in the class. Students who do not view the content that we provide, it's kind of all over the map, right? But if you really want to succeed in this course, the first step is read the text, watch the videos, and watch the walkthroughs. We'll see one of those in a second. Okay, 
So I'm going to pause this, uh, let myself move on. Um, there's a few other videos here, same format. Um, but one of the most important components, so we've already seen a playground, right? That gives you a chance to, to run some code and see what happens. But what's right here, this interactive walkthrough, this is probably the most important component that we use to help you learn computer science. Um, so it looks a little bit like a video. And if I click on here, uh, Colleen's going to start uh, explaining something to me. And what's happening here, again, I'm, I'm turning off the audio, but you really normally do want the audio on, is that Colleen is explaining something in code. And as she goes, she's able to run the code just like you might. She's also making edits to the code. And if at any point you want to pause this walkthrough, you can go ahead and take control, right? So I'm now editing the code. I can do you know what I want with this. These walkthroughs are critical to your understanding of the material. So do not go through the lessons and skip these, right? I've had students that say, oh, well, I was really confused about how to do this. I tried to solve the practice problem. I couldn't do it. And then you realize, well, you didn't actually walk any to watch any of the walkthroughs. So that's sort of like not reading a textbook for a class. You're not going to understand very much. This is such an important foundation of how we explain things. And the reason is we want to show you how to work with code. And these walkthroughs embody that. You'll also notice that you have two options here for an instructor uh, to, to listen to so, and to watch. So Colleen is one. Um, and there's also an explanation for me. Uh, oh, it wants me to unmute the audio. See, who built all these features? OK. Uh, so there's an explanation for me here as well. Uh, and you can watch both of these. You can choose one to watch first. I mean, usually people want to watch one first. And then if you're still confused, maybe watch the other one. In other places, we actually have explanations from other course staff as well. So I'm one of the instructors for the course. Colleen Lewis, who's shown here, um, helped teach the class in fall 2021. And particularly if you're learning Java, you'll find a lot of her explanations throughout this site, and they're fantastic. And then in other places, we have explanations from other uh, tutors as well. I'll show you an example of that in a second. OK, so here's another example of a video. This one's a little bit silly. OK. So now we've seen at this point the walkthroughs, we've seen text, we've seen video components. Now we're going to get you to do something. Um, so throughout the lessons, we are going to have practice problems. And one of the things what we're teaching you how to do is to solve simple computational uh, problems, to make plans that a computer can execute. Um, so here's an example of one. So this is a practice problem. The description is right here. There is a, a notification here that says, you will be able to see how to do it once you either finish the problem or you attempt it eight times. So with the practice problem, the idea is we're giving you a chance to try it. If you get it, great. Uh, if you don't get it, after you've tried it eight times, rather than just letting you get really frustrated, we're going to show you how to do it. Um, so here's an example. So this one says uh, I'm supposed to print hello world. Uh, let's. Let's try a few uh, attempts at this. Uh, this doesn't work. This doesn't work either. That doesn't work. Let's try this. Uh, also, no, this doesn't work. You can see I've got three more attempts here. Uh, let's try another one that doesn't uh, quite, that the computer can't quite understand. One more attempt. And then finally, OK, so I want you to, to notice this. I'm going to hit this. And now, below this, there is what's called a solution walkthrough. So for the practice problems and for the homework problems, once you've completed it or with the practice problems, if you try it enough times and you're stuck, we have an explanation waiting for you. So if you click on this down here, uh, again, I got to unmute my audio, click on it. Um, now you're going to be able to watch me walk through how to solve this problem. So, you know, and, and we do this for the homework too, but the difference is for the practice problems, they're not graded. And you can see the solution walkthrough after you've tried the practice problem you know, eight times. OK, so practice problems, solution walkthroughs, again, critical content. The practice problems are here to make sure that you understand the material. If you can solve the practice problem, you're in good shape. That means that you've understood the lesson content. So as you go through, stop, do the practice problem. If you get stuck or something doesn't quite make sense, the right thing to do at that point is back up go back to some of the earlier content, maybe watch walkthroughs by some other instructors, experiment with the examples a bit more, and, and you know, don't go on until you feel confident 
solving that practice problem because the practice problems are like the homework problems and the homework problems are like the quiz questions that we're going to ask you. And so a lot of your success in that environment starts with your work on these lessons. Okay. So we've got practice problems for you to solve. We also have this component called a debugging challenge. Um, and so let me go ahead and, and reset this. Um, so again, this is a practice problem. It's another example of something that we're not counting toward your grade. One of the things that we're gonna be teaching you how to do throughout the semester, and we'll talk more about this, there's more uh, information about this in this video, is fix code that's not correct. So, you know, we want you to write correct code, but there's also times when you're gonna find code that doesn't work quite right, or you're gonna write the code that doesn't work quite right, and you wanna be able to fix those mistakes so that you can create a working solution. And so what we have here, uh, what we've created for you, and this is something that's really unique to CS124, are these debugging exercises. So this code is wrong. Uh, this code doesn't work. Uh, if I run it, uh, what I'll be able to see is that it didn't work, it's doing something wrong, and my goal is to fix it. Um, and also, you'll see up here, I have to fix it without changing more than one line, right? So for example, I can't do, I can't just go ahead and replace the entire uh, problem. That's not going to work. Uh, it's going to, uh, you know, it's not going to let me submit this, right? I can't submit this because I've changed too many lines. If I want to start over, and this is true for all of these editors that save the contents, I can hit the restore button, so that takes me back to the original uh, exercise. In this case, there's a little typo here. It looks like somebody meant to type O and typed a 1. So if I, um, if I do this, then I can move on. When we grade these, we're going to ask you to solve five of them or more than one, right? And so when you're done with one, you hit the next button. There's two other buttons over here that I want to talk about briefly. The skip button will allow you to move on to a different debugging challenge. So if you get really stuck with one of them and you just can't see what's wrong with it, you can hit skip and you can move to the next one. The check button is a little bit different. So there are some of these debugging challenges, and we're working on fixing this, that don't quite work where they're not solvable. So if you think that the one that you're looking at doesn't actually have a solution, that doesn't require you changing more than you know, the certain number of lines, you can hit check and it will say, okay, well, this problem was not solvable, right? So that's good, right? I was able to skip one that didn't work. Um, okay, if I hit this for one that does work, it says, okay, well, this one can be completed, right? Um, all right, so let's do this one just for fun. Now I'm moving on. Okay, um, so now we're going through, we, we've seen the, the walkthroughs, we've seen text, we've seen you know, the variety of ways that we're uh, using to teach you how to do this. Let's look at our first homework problem. So on the lessons, and I'm not going to promise these are all in the same place, but on the lessons, each one has a homework problem. I should say most of them have homework problems. Once we start the project, we have lessons that cover the project, and then we're going to ask you to go do some project work. But when early part, and then we're in the, in the early part of the class, and you're learning the basics, each lesson is going to have a homework problem. Um, so down here, uh, the, this is a description of the problem. This tells me about the, 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 the sort of credit policy. So in this case, I have until 9-11 to complete this problem. After that point, I'm going to lose two points per day. So this is a 10-point question. Um, down here, you'll see that uh, there's a, a challenge to, uh, to solve. I've actually already done this one, um, but let's go ahead. And there's, I have a walkthrough um, showing you how to approach this. So once I submit this and solve it, uh, this will show me that my current score is 10 out of 10. And it also encourages me to keep trying different things, right? Because you know I can you know, try solving this in a slightly different way, right? So here's a slightly different solution that works the same, um, but you know I still have the credit that I have. Okay, so, and, and once I've solved the problem, there's this solution walkthrough waiting for me down here that I can view. And this is really good, right? Because sometimes, you know, even if you've solved the problem, you're gonna find other ways to approach it when you watch that solution walkthrough. Many of the problems that appear on the lessons, both the practice and the homework problems, also have a lot of content, a lot of solution walkthroughs from course tutors. And that gives you a great chance to learn from you know, a near peer, someone who just took the course usually one or two semesters ago. And they also have a lot of interesting ways of approaching the problem. So those can be fun to view. Okay, now when I'm done with each lesson, 
Um, if I want to continue to uh, practice those concepts, I can go to our practice page. So I'm going to click on this link. It's going to take a, a little slower to load on my machine than it will be for you on the actual website. And you'll see that we have a page of additional exercises that you can complete. And you can see we write a new one of these hello semester questions for every semester. So we've got a whole bunch of those. Um, but as you scroll up, these are for lessons that we haven't completed yet. Uh, but these are the ones I should be able to complete after I've completed the first lesson. And I can click on one of these. And again, these pages load a little bit more slowly for me than they will on the official website because I'm using a development environment. Um, but here's another problem that I can do, right? Uh, and I can work on these problems and I can use them to reinforce my understanding. So when you get done with the lesson and you know if you feel a little shaky about the concepts and you want to keep trying new things, the practice page is where to come. Okay, next up, let's check on our grades. Uh, so this is a page that I suspect will be important to many of you. Um, this is where we show you how you're doing in the class. And we really want you to know on a daily basis where you stand in the course. In particular, because when you start to get behind or if you start to get behind or if you're not doing as well as you want, we want you to reach out and get support. We have so many great tutoring and support resources for this class. You need to come use them though, right? We're gonna sometimes come to you. If we see that you're not doing so well, we'll reach out and we'll encourage you to make it to, to take advantage of those resources, but this is sort of the primary way, this page, of assessing how you're doing. Okay, so we're gonna come back to, to this, uh, this matrix here. Let's go down here and look at the homework section. Uh, so what this shows me is, now these are homework on all the lessons that have been released so far. These are not due yet, right? So you'll see here the deadline is shown. All of the first two weeks of homework are due together on the 11th of September. After that point, they'll be due a few days after the lesson is released. So lessons come out a few days before the date on the lesson. The homework is due typically 24 hours afterwards for full credit. And then on many of the homework problems, you can receive partial credit for late submissions past that point, usually losing about two points per day. So you have like an extra five days to complete the homework problems. In general, again, please, I implore you, if you want to succeed in this class, stick to our schedule because we have quizzes every week too. So you may think, oh, you know, I have a week to finish that homework problem. But if you don't do the homework and you don't understand how to do the homework, you're gonna end up in the CBTF and you're gonna really struggle because you're not gonna be prepared for the quiz and the quiz score will be lower than you want. Um, okay, down here, your quiz scores will appear once we start taking quizzes. We haven't given any yet. All right, I wanna return to this top bit. Um, so, what again, going back to something I said when we talked about the lesson content, overall, the number one thing we see associated with success in this class is reviewing the material. And it sort of makes sense if you are not reading the textbook, if you are not using the materials that we provide that you paid for, right? I mean, you pay a lot of money for your education here at the University of Illinois. This is what you're paying for, right? These materials are the best introductory computer science materials on the planet, you have access to them and to our tutoring resources. So that's a separate thing. If you don't review the content we've created, it's hard to succeed. So up here for each lesson that's available, right? So right now we've given you access to the first two weeks. So don't panic if this looks all red, you can still work one day at a time starting on the first day of class. But this shows you for each component of the uh, lesson, have you viewed it or not? Um, and you'll see here, remember we started a few of those videos. So this one's very light green. I've seen 17% of that one video. I've seen 15% of this walkthrough. Remember we started that too as a demo, but in general, I have not viewed much of the content for the course. So as you go through the semester, if you want to succeed in the class, make this area green, right? If this area becomes green, it means you're reviewing the material. It means you're learning. And that's gonna to translate to high quiz scores and really good performance in the class. Like we've been monitoring this for a few semesters and the students that you know, review the content do not fail the class and earn A's at extremely high rates. So if you want to succeed, do the work, right? I mean, that almost goes without saying, but we have this here as a reminder that this is how, you know, this is what you need to do to succeed in, in CS 1.4 review the content. Okay, last thing. 
you'll notice up here, and let me go back to the let me go back to the lesson to let's see here. Um, you'll notice up here on the right, uh, you'll see there's this little icon with a hand, and what that means is that there is tutoring available. So whenever you're working in the class, uh, it's unless you're like working at three in the morning. Um, from about 10 a.m. till midnight every day, uh, and maybe a little bit less on weekends, we have tutors available whenever you have a question. And we have this really nice online system for gaining support. So let's say I'm going through this lesson and I get to a point and there's something that confuses me and I have a question. Um, and again, you can do this whenever you want. No question is too small. And we're trying to make this very frictionless, right? We want you to ask questions. We have so many staff that are really excited to help you. So here's what I do. I see that there's tutoring available because this hand is here and it's green. I click on it. Uh, that's gonna take me to the tutoring uh, page. I need help with Kotlin. That's the language I'm studying. Uh, let's say I have a question about lesson content or something else. I fill in this little form. I click on the button. And now I'm in a room waiting for tutoring. And in a minute or two, what's going to happen is that a tutor is going to enter this room and they are going to, uh, you're going to be joined into a video call and they are going to be there to, uh, to answer your question. So uh, you, the way you wait for tutoring is you come into the room and you wait here, right? You wait here for a staff member to show up. Usually when we're getting started, particularly for the first few months of the course, somebody will be there in a few minutes right? Maybe in a few seconds sometimes, right? I mean, because we have tutors waiting throughout the day. Um, so don't feel inhibited about asking for support. We want you to do this. It's so important, right? We've put a lot of time and energy and we have a lot of staff who are super excited about supporting your journey in computer science. So come in for tutoring, use this system and somebody will be there and you can ask any question you want, right? Um, if you like tutoring with a homework problem, you can click here, you can get support, you're stuck, you don't understand how that, how a certain thing works. We're going to join you in a one-on-one -on -one call with an actual human person. This is not AI. Uh, we are working on some tools to support you with AI, but a human connection is frequently really important because the person that you're going to talk to, first of all, these are your fellow students. These are, you know, experts in the field. These are many people who most of our staff took the course maybe one or two semesters ago. They remember what it's like. They know what it's like to get stuck. Um, sometimes they're going to be as confused as you are. They won't be able to solve the problem immediately, but you'll work on it together and they'll get you to the point where you figure out what's wrong or you're able to address the question or the doubt that you have. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go back to the lesson page just for a quick recap. So come to the lesson page every day, do your lesson, go through the content, review the content, concentrate, kind of watch what's going on, experiment with stuff, make small changes, make sure you understand the things that are being taught that day. Use the practice problems and the debugging exercises to test your knowledge, that's what they're there for. When you're ready, complete the homework problem for that day and you're done, that's it. If you do that consistently, you will succeed in this class. Whenever you need help, we have tutors available, right? So jump on the tutoring site, get in, uh, you know, put in your request. Somebody will be with you shortly and will support you, right? So that's the tutorial aspect of the format of the course, right? You start doing the work using the materials we provided. When you have questions, we have support that you need. Okay, uh, let's see if I can get this to go back face yeah okay so that's it um you know and you know please if you have any questions about how to approach the course don't hesitate to ask us um you know this is you know an overview uh it's designed to give you a sense of how things work i know it's a little bit long sorry about that but you know this is what you do on a daily basis so i wish you the best luck um and hope uh for your great success in the class uh and there are so many people, including me and all of these amazing tutors that are involved with the class that care about your success. So, you know, please, you know, if there's anything we can do to support you, let us know and please make use of the resources that we do provide.